the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm so unworthy. Any worshipers in the house? a long time. Praise God. Don't only give them the good part of serving in office, of ministry. Praise the Lord. Let them understand that it's going to get rough at times because some of us as pastors and bishops, we act like it is all nice. Sometimes we want to walk away from the pulpit. So tell them that it's not always easy. Praise the name of Jesus. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Don't come and spread a tear and make them feel like it's a bed of roses. Praise God because it's not a bed of roses. Praise the name of Jesus. Jesus, oh, praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So at this time, praise God, coming to bring greetings. Amen. Coming to, amen. Not even bring greetings, but you're coming to encourage, amen, the candidates at this time. Praise God. I'm starting with Minister Gray in Jesus' mighty name. Overseer God, to all the clergy, I greet you all in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Worship the Lord. Yes, yes, somebody said that the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Praise God. And every tongue will confess. Praise the name of Jesus. And to our candidate tonight, praise God. I remember a couple of years ago, I was sitting in your position. Praise the name of Jesus. Even mosquito could have bite you. Our hands could have crawled upon you. Praise God. Knowing the strictness of the leaders that are ordained in you. Praise the name of Jesus. You have to stand still. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Worship the name of Jesus. Yes, but tonight I am saying, praise God, that a man got a message. Praise the name of Jesus. To go and anoint a servant. Praise the name of Jesus. But tonight is your night. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. And no matter what storm cloud may come oh god they may put you to the back oh praise the name of jesus but when god appoints your anointing no man no devil from the pit of hell can stop it god bless you in jesus name yeah. Hallelujah. oh praise the name of jesus yes, lord. Yeah. come on believers put your hands together for the man of god put your hands together 
Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for those encouraging words. Amen. Minister Gray, praise the Lord. We're gonna, amen. Uh, praise God, ask, amen. Pastor, amen. Buckner to bring greetings at this time and to encourage the candidates. Amen. Holy clergy. Man and virgin. Same. Amen. I will encourage you with my own story. Oh my God. I tell my church today. Well, well. This month, make it 33 years, I am still alive. I, I was once dead. My God. I'm not talking dead in Christ. Dead. The Lord see fit to give me a second chance. And with that second chance, the stumble, well, the fall, well, the sin, well, may come sharp. Well, but to his glory, come on, come on, take your time. Go ahead. I am still standing. Well, well, well. On my death, then I ask him for something. And I had to tell the church, I had to remind the church that you see the glory of God. People don't realize the glory of God. But it's you must have a personal relationship Amen. so you can understand it for yourself. Amen. Because you say, what God do for me is not what he do for you. Come on. And he can't tell you what he do for you. No, he's not what he do for me. Amen. I ask him on my deathbed for your wife. Some kids, they are three. Okay. And then they have a whole house full on top of it. Well, so he sees fit to bless me with more than what I have. Uh -huh. So you see this work, the one stumble, the one fall, uh -huh. the one sin. Let me say that again. The one sin. Yes. But when you sin, remember there's a God who looks high. No man, no, 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 no. Look high. But then sit very low. Because when, when you sin, and you think nobody now see you, he's seeing you. But he will Logic. forgive you. Logic. He will forgive you. A lot of times we yes. caught up in our sin, and we can't forgive us. My God. Logic. So here, what he's saying, him sit high, look low. But he must look high, he must sit high. Looking low as he's waiting for when you come on your bending knees asking forgiveness. Yeah. Remember, I know, the boy stumble, the boy fall. Amen. Listen, you could have been my mother. You hear me say? But the road is never too narrow. Why? Love to me. Narrow. Why? It's only narrow. There was some virgin, five of them, mm -hmm. with oil. Hey, the Lord. All right. This is some ready, and some was getting ready. Amen. Try and make sure so you're ready. Don't get ready. Amen. Praise, Amen. The Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, put your hands together for him. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to ask Evangelist Cameron to come and to... Amen. Encourage the candidates. Yes, evangelist. Yes, yes, evangelist. Come on. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let the church shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, let the church shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Certainly, I give honor to God. Amen. To the uh, pastor of this house, so Bishop Garnes, and every uh, bishop uh, in your respective spaces. I ask him not to call me. Amen. I just wanted to support. But tonight, um, it's indeed a privilege and an honor to, amen, to give a charge to the candidates on tonight. Amen. The Bible tells us, amen, in the book of Ephesians in chapter 4, amen, when God uh, spoke about the different offices, the fivefold ministry of the church, amen, it specifically outlines, amen, those, amen, that ought to work within the body of Christ. And there are three words that stood out to me as I read the scripture. 
Amen. It talks about the pastors, the teachers, the prophets, the uh, evangelists, amen, to do three specific things. Repeat with me, church. Amen. Perfect. Amen. To work. Amen. And to edify. Amen. And as I look on those three words, amen, and when we think about words within the English language, they all, amen, connotes the idea, amen, of a part of speech. Amen. And to perfect, to work, and to edify, amen, are verbs. Amen. And I remember when I was in school, amen, verbs are action words. Amen. Verbs, amen, require some level of action. Amen. And so as you are about to step into another level of ministry, amen, may I caution you, may I encourage you, amen, Amen. To study the word of God. Amen. Timothy tells us, amen, that in the last days, amen, many are going to have itching ears. Amen. And they're not going to give heed, amen, to sound doctrine. Amen. So in this spiritual thing, it is more than just a title. Amen. Make sure that you're able to work the word. And in order to work the word, you must study to show yourself approved. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Evangelist Cameron. One thing stood out to me, amen. It's more than just a title. It's more than just the name. It's more than just the office. Amen. Amen. But one thing I would say proudly that I think the spiritual church, we need to teach that more. That we pick up and we just place in office. And some people that are in office don't even know the meaning of the office. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. But I take it, I find it fit that I, small little Pastor Lambert, I seek advice. Oh, praise God. And, any, and these people that sit here, they should at least know the basic of ministry and leadership. So I make sure I have something called leadership seminars. And I have people that I know that is fitable to come in and train them and to teach them. Praise the name of Jesus. So that when, uh, praise God, they walk in the office fully, they should know. And can say, oh, pastor, just are they what I didn't explain to me. Oh, praise the Lord. And the next thing that I tell my church that our, um, appointment is like engagement. So after a certain period of time, it should be expired. So if you are appointed, in an office, you should be getting ready to be ordained. You don't, you don't appoint for the rest of your life. Because when you engage, you engage for six months. And after six months, something is wrong with that engagement, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what that was taught. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So these people sit here, I make sure that I'm fully licensing and ordain them because they were placed in office here. Praise the name of Jesus. I don't want to see them walking around all their life appointed, appointed, appointed. What are they appointed for? They should be placed once they have learned. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. And they could, should be able to give an account for the Amen. The sheep. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Coming to bring greetings. Praise God. Amen. Amen. She said she prayed. Praise God. Reverend Marissa, thank you anyway. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Pastor Atkins is his only. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to ask, Amen, Reverend Fuller. Praise God to come and to encourage the candidates. Sweet Jesus.
some scorpion. You are going to meet up on some spiritual alligator. Some spiritual bed bug. Some spiritual blood sucker. What oh, sweet.
Seated in the presence of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Oh, praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We're coming on fine. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask Amen or a visiting mother. Praise God. Or Bishop Mother, all the way from London, England. Praise God to come and to encourage the candidates. Praise the name of Jesus. Bishop Mother Palmer in Jesus' name. Amen.
And this evening I want to say congratulations. I've heard you said something and I'm very proud. Because when I started as a pastor, I didn't know that. And I was given a gun without training. My God. And I believe if you give a man a gun and he don't know how to use it, he's even a danger to himself. And since God has opened my knowledge, the other day I went and graduated and came out with my masters in theology. And everybody being ordained in my ministry must go to Bible school. So I must congratulate you and say well done. And I pray that God will continue to give you wisdom. Hallelujah. As a leader, people of God. Amen. Glory to God. Yes, in revival, we may have had some old time, but when we get the knowledge, let's step away from it. And sometime when you try to bring it in the light, some people say you're changing. And you become a Pentecostal and you don't know the hard and the numbers. But the word is the way the power lies in the word of God. And as you're about to be ordained in your various offices, this evening I want to tell you, let the word of God be a lamp to your feet and a light to your devil. Amen. Because in this season, you got to be alert. Because the devil is a very busy man. Amen. This evening, let the word of God be a lamp to your feet and a light to your pathway. Meditate upon the word of God day and night. Glory to God this evening. Amen. Your lessons come from Ephesians chapter 4. Amen. But I want to bring it over in Ephesians 6. Where Paul was telling the church to put on the old armor. Now you're about to go in office, you need to be covered. Now you cannot go and leave your head open. You gotta cover your head. Amen. Amen. You gotta cover your breastplate. You gotta put on your shoes. You gotta put on your bed and God because you're now in a spiritual war. And mm. next thing I want to tell you, don't get weary in well doing. Oh. Don't get weary. Amen. When they lie upon you, still come and worship. Oh when they talk about Remember you were ordained in office. Oh, yeah. Amen. When the church is not worshiping, you show up and worship. Amen. Because God has called you the vineyard to work. And this evening, I want to congratulate you. I want to tell you, well done. And may God bless each and every one of you. And pastor, you're doing a great work. May God extend your territory. May God bless you. May he protect you from the enemy. And may he build a fence around you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Come on, praise the name of Jesus. Somebody said, Bless our Lord. Bless our Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. I I am I'm praise God. I whenever time somebody come to encourage, I'm taking my time to listen. Amen. The, what they are giving. Praise the name of Jesus. Yes, oh, worship the Lord. And I hear she said something that stood out to me. That standing the fight, man. Praise God. Sometimes you have some officers. Praise God. They are officers and they love you until you correct them. Yes. They are officers and they love you until you correct them. And when you correct them and tell them, oh praise God, where they go wrong, they run down a mother me, or they run down a brother Paul. Praise God because they will accept me. Praise God. And pray, I, tell, I tell upper room, when you are, if you are dealing in upper room, you are dealing to serve here. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. So if you leave, bring back my documents and leave. Yeah. Right so, right so. Logic. Any service that they get here, once you leave and give them back and you can go because you were ordained to serve here. Well, well, well. Come because on, some people church. come to church and tell them, you know, then they run. Come on, so we have to be careful how we keep ordination. Yes. For the minute ordination keeps spirit start talking to some people. Yes. Oh, Jesus. I must start looking at missing a building a rent. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. And someone will buy a house and we say we're going to use the basement and we get 20 cheer. And start something. And we start reading up and say, God, give a church. But when God give a church, bring my service ticket. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I tell all my officers, you could be my mother, I respect you, but if I respect you enough to reprimand you. Yes. Amen. I praise the Lord. Yes, the church get quiet, don't know, because this is where church don't like. Church don't like no pastor correct them these days, you know. And when they correct some member, they tell, them, tell the pastor how much strict make him up. Oh, yes? Uh, uh, all right. 
And through me, Osha, I know the pastor need me. I'm not going to church for three weeks. Mm. Pastor Otavada. Oh, we are going like we don't know how church people stay these days. Come on, bishop and pastors. Yes. Reprimand members, they stay home. Because they say Pastor Rude. But I tell them whether they stay home and not the door must open. And I, oh, oh Lord Jesus, one thing I will tell I, I tell the members and the officers, you know, but I give me no gift. Because you give for your money now, make me not talk, no reprimand you. Don't give me no gift and don't give me no envelope. Because that not gonna make me, me can't look up river man here because you know you give me five bunches of yesterday, me can't talk to you. Yeah. And if it just fool me belly, I'm gonna tell you you're wrong. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, let me speak proper. I speak, I speak proper English too, I'm sorry. Amen. For those people who don't understand me, praise the Lord. Amen. I, I, oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Bishop of here said I must speak properly. <laughs> Oh, praise the Lord. Praise Amen. So for those who don't understand, I believe in order and decency. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. I worship the Lord. Amen. 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 And I, oh God, sorry. Should I say it? Yes, no. I will. I tell upper room, anybody that you work and wear a robe here, make sure you wear it correctly. Nobody go buy a bishop garment. And an apostle garment come in. Wear the right thing. Praise the name of Jesus. Because we see some wrong things sometimes, you know. Hallelujah. Deacon of a purple shirt. Not here. Hallelujah. Not inside here. Yeah. Pastors of a purple shirt. Yeah. Ministers wearing purple shirt. Stay on your lane. I know what the colors mean. Hallelujah. I'm going to keep quiet. I'm training them properly. Yes. Not because we're in Zion, we should know it. Yes. Because we're a Christian church. Yes. Amen. So that's why you know what I do. I, get, I make sure I get books of protocol and I get bishops who could advise them and teach me. So I can teach them. Amen. I praise the Lord. Yes. I praise the Lord. Praise Don't get upset at the church. Praise God. I'm sorry. That's just me. Praise the Lord. Amen. So come in to bring greetings at this time. Come in to bring greetings at the church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen to my why you laughing, brother? Amen, my mother. Amen. Teacher Laura coming to encourage the candidates. Praise God, we're coming on fine. Amen. We're gonna put on the speaker. So please let me let us wrap it up. Amen. Shortly. Praise the Lord. Grace and peace be multiplied from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. To the Cardinal of Brooklyn, God bless you. Amen. <laughs> to Protocol does not demand that I call the speaker. God bless you, my good mother dear, my good son. Grace and peace be multiplied from all of us here. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I am a bit jet lag. <laughs> all right. I, I, I went to do some business in Texas and Louisiana, and the, and the storm met me there. And um, I pray that I um, get back here to to be with these five beautiful candidates. Amen. But I, I, I came with uh, uh, just a word to say to all of you that when you, when you want to be in office, uh -huh. if I should say that, we tend to propagate... Hold on, let me behave myself. We tend to think that we could rule the ministry. Uh -huh. Could I say that? Yes, sir. We tend to operate out of our modus operandi. We tend to operate out of our status quo, if I should say that. Go ahead. So that the pastor wants to call you a missionary. Uh -huh. Will you help me now? Yes. Go ahead. But I go down to Brooklyn. Uh huh. Oh, yes. Lord Jesus. Yes. And I visit a church. Uh -huh. Big said. And I want to call you an evangelist. Yes, that's right. Why? Because you say one word and it sounds evangelistic. <laughs> And you want to come back to upper room. Yes. But I know you can't do that. Not at all. 
and operate as if yes. nothing happened. You, were... you get the yoke from them. Yes. But let me say to all of you, I am afraid of the yoke. Could I say that to you? Those of you that have to put on the yoke in your neck, oh God, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> that is why it is called a yoke. Why? Why? Because the only thing could keep horse and donkey properly is when you yoke them. My God. So you people in black. Laura will watch you because you can't walk as you like. My God. You can't talk as you like. Yes. Because you cannot go to heaven as you like. And you missionaries and evangelists, I'm watching you too. You can't dress how you want. Talk to them. Yes, true. Tell them. You have to wear half slip. As yes. women. Oh yes, tell them. Say talk to them, tell them. Yes. Yes. I'm not string in church. You have to dress properly. Yes. Tell them. When you have to wear white, you can't wear red blue. Yes. Young man, your pants can't be too tight. Holy go. Your clothes must look good. Yes. Your breasts must not show. Yes. Uh -huh. Talk to them. My God, I like it. I like it. Tongues is not for the church. Uh -huh. Ooh. Let me be the church yes. must be the church. Uh -huh. Attire yourself properly. Know yes. when to wear your ministerial garment. Uh -huh. oh, yes. Don't go in another man's church uh -huh. with your ecclesiastical robes unless you are invited. Oh, yes. And your pastor gives you the authority. Oh, yes. Because you may walk and turn your own key. When you're in the church of God, you're not your own man, but your own woman. Yes. So let me encourage all of you. I am so proud of you guys. I am excited for you. I will continue to pray your strength. Let me say to you, bullets will pass. Could I say that? Stone will cut. But if you see the stone, you just knock. But if you don't see the stone, when you see them, you gather them, and you build your empire. Amen. So you will be good soldiers. God bless you. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for the woman of God. Logic, logic, logic. No need to repeat. Oh God, open the hear this all the time. I tell all open room emails, you must want to sleep. And if, uh, if it comes to the test, we have to go show me the tail part, me need to see it. Most when I sleep. Thank you. I like that. Amen. Come in to bring greetings and encourage the church. Father Jones, in Jesus' name. I think you'll be rather brief. And I am happy to be in this ordination. And that's a place I seldom go. I'm waiting for the preacher. And of course, I'll be rather brief. <laughs> the ministry that you portray today, Galatians 4, the 16th chapter, because I tell you the truth, I become your enemy. And the ministry that you are portraying today you must tell everyone the truth Amen. first 
in your household. For if you cannot rule your house, don't come to church and try to rule the church. God bless you in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Come on, praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you, Father Jones. Amen. But it just lay my heart. Amen. I know um, Overseer Gochi is in, um, going running her service. But I was going to ask her just to say something to the candidates. Amen. After which we're going to hear from Bishop Garsden, the speaker. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I, I greet, Amen. Everyone again in the mighty name, Jesus. Amen. Bless God. I might not be able to call on the name, but I greet you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good to see you, Bishop Garns. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, praise the Lord. Amen. I'm happy to see everybody. Amen. Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. But I want to say amen to the candidates who are here. Amen. The point is, amen. Bless the name of Jesus. Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. Grow where you are planted. Amen. That's my word to you tonight. Grow where you are planted. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Come on, praise the name of Jesus. When we look, amen, at a plant, amen, the first stage, amen, is at the seed, amen, that's where plant starts from. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, when the seed, amen, for the seed to germinate, to grow, amen, it must, amen, have water, amen, it must have, amen, praise God, some warmth or sunshine, praise God, amen, praise, and it must have, amen, air, oh, praise the name of Jesus, amen, my water to you tonight is the word of God, amen, praise God, the word, reading the word daily, come on, praise the name of Jesus, amen, pray on fasting, that's my water, come on, praise the name of Jesus, come on, praise the name of Jesus, so I'm talking, amen, bless God, amen, the, the sunshine, amen, that the plant need, I want to say that's the Holy Ghost, come on, Praise the name Jesus. Come on, praise the name of Jesus. For you to grow, you need the Holy Ghost. Come on, praise the name of Jesus. Come on, praise the name of Jesus. Amen. And, and the air that we need. Let's talk about the atmosphere. Come on, praise the name of Jesus. Do you know that, amen, bless God, certain plants can't grow in certain atmosphere. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Amen. So you have, you have, to, you have to be careful of the air that you inhale. Come on, praise God. Come on, praise the name. That will not allow you to grow. Come on, praise the name of Jesus. Come on, praise the name of Jesus. So I'm saying to you tonight, amen, bless the name of Jesus. Amen, the atmosphere must be clean. And, and some people around us, amen, they, they, they pollute the atmosphere. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. We can't survive in that kind of condition. Come on, praise God. So in the church of God, you have to take for yourself sometimes. You have to take for yourself from some people.
I've not been in my house for a while. Uh -huh. so, you know I'm thirsty, right? Uh -huh. I, I'm, not, I'm not in my house for a while. Uh -huh. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Uh -huh. uh, but I can't wait to get into Zion. Uh -huh. Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. Uh -huh. Come on, praise the name of Jesus. Uh -huh. Bishop Mother Drek is coming to amen to encourage the candidates. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, give on and glory to God. We praise God. Amen. Uh, um, praise God uh, to the entire ecclesiastical function present here today. Amen. Protocol established many times over. Amen. Accept greeting. Um, excuse my attire. I do understand when the invite said you should wear your robes or you should wear your civic attire. I am wearing neither. We praise the Lord. Amen. And, and um, it's just a situation. But I said, you know, let me make myself air anyway. We praise God. I'm saying that for the cause of the candidates as they see me. Don't follow my pattern. We praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, I must greet you this evening and I'm in the deed. Amen. Excited. Amen. I'm waiting to hear the word. We praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, um, the word ordination derives from the word order. We have ordinations to bring order into the church. We praise God. And that's a word a lot of us don't want to hear because it is attached to discipline. We praise God. I know you have heard enough from your amen pastor. Amen. And everyone, we praise the Lord. Um, so I'm not going again, and I know the preacher is coming, well, amen, uh, but I would just encourage you, like I heard uh, some foregone speaker said, you know, sometimes uh, when you look, the grass look greener, but when you see that, you must consider that the water bill is higher. Over on the other side. Logic. Logic. 
But what about if you try to op to water your own? Yes. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Amen. We praise the Lord. And that's why you're being ordained tonight. So, amen. I pray that God, I'm, I'm, I must tell you, Pastor Lord, I'm so proud of you. And why am I saying that? I was there when you were being ordained. Amen. And uh, I do, amen, I praise, especially young people. I don't know about anybody, but I know that I am getting there. Some person says, uh, Mother Trekkit, you look good. Yeah, the face look good, but the body not ready yet. <laughs> we praise God. Amen. So I know it needs some young folks uh, who can up, skip, and jump uh, more than I do. We praise the Lord. Don't think I'm talking about you, though. We need hurting us. We praise the Lord. <laughs> but amen. We still have work to do in God's house. Amen. We praise the Lord. And I pray that, amen, uh, uh, you've been ordained today. And uh, I pray I don't go someplace else and see you over there. I pray God. And, uh, and because uh, um, you have... Uh, 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 um, uh, um, some ministers and some, I don't know who they are, amen, who they have no, amen, spiritual discipline. Because if you're coming to my church, amen, you, uh, I have to contact your pastor to find out what went on over there, why you are coming over here. But some folks, they're not interested in that. But I said a good fisherman don't swap fish. He catches fish. So today may God bless you. And may God keep you. And I want you not just to listen. But to apply everything you hear today. In whatever era of ministry you are embarking on. Because God. Hallelujah. Ultimately. Amen. Is the judge. Your service is to him first. Not to the people around you. Not to please the people. To please God first. And when you please God. And you displease somebody else. Don't worry about that. Once you're pleasing God. So God bless you all. And God keep you. As I said I just snuck in here. Waiting to hear the word. God bless you Pastor Lambert. Continue. Amen. And as I said um, the other day, there's one virtue that a lot of us cannot master yet. And that's the virtue of humility. Yes. Very hard virtue. But you continue. And in the meantime... Greetings and encourage your candidates in Jesus' name. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It is an honor to be in the house of the Lord and giving much salutations to you, Overseer, in your leadership. I'm going to be shorter than the Cardinal, if you will, because the preacher man is in the house. And since I am one who has authored the book called Protocol, it will make sense for me to understand he's the preacher, not myself. I do want to elevate you with these words of charge and challenge. I've heard a number of people that have congratulated you. And I understand the reason why they've done that. Rightfully so, I can say congratulations. However, I wish to say I offer you my condolences. <laughs> now, Jake, go ahead. And I'm gonna say this as brief as I can, because we celebrate ordinations rightfully so. Mm -hmm. But there's a challenge that we fail to recognize that the, the idea of accepting the call yes. to ministry is accepting the call of death. We keep flipping what scripture says to suit us and make our emotions feel good. I have to challenge you with truth of the word of God. As a biblicist, I'm a firm believer in the word. I challenge you with my condolences. The moment you said yes to Christ in your salvation, is the moment you began to walk toward death. Because the enemy does not like the idea that you have began to live because you're in Christ. And I want you to remember these words that the scripture says. 
Jesus said, I say to you, Peter, I pray that your faith faileth not. He didn't say, I pray that you don't fall. I heard someone speak about the fall. It is the natural human behavior to fall. Anyone in here that tells you they've never fallen, they are a liar. And that at that point, they've already fallen. Peter is prayed for that your faith faileth not. Which as long as your faith is intact, you can get back up. As long as you hold on to the irresistible word of God, you will forever be able to stand on your feet. I close to say, Whatever you do in your studies, you be because in Zion and in Pentecost, we can sing, dance, and shout. Nothing wrong with that. Look at somebody say, nothing wrong with that. But when you walk in this field, personally, you need, according to the word of God, to study the book. I have always and will forever have a challenge with people who wear the yoke and cannot deliver the word of God. Amen. Somebody said, my Lord. Somebody said, my Lord. Somebody said one more time, my Lord. Oh my God. The word is coming. Praise the name of Jesus. But I'm going to try and chant. One verse of this hymn, like, overseer, God, I don't think I'm going to be successful. I'm going to try. Take the task he give you gladly. Let it work your pleasure be and sacri.
everywhere. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. At this time, I'll ask the candidates to turn and face the pulpit. Praise the name of Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord as the word come in. Praise the name of Jesus. Put the evangelists at the front. Amen. The one in the black to the back. Praise the Lord. Here am I, send me. Send me, send me. Here am I, send me. Send me, 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 Amen. Praise the Lord. Come in at this time to deliver the word of God. Amen. No stranger to none of us. Amen. The man of God himself. Amen. Congregation Bishop Atiba Moses. Bishop Atiba Moses, your working congregation in care of the blessed Holy Ghost. We bless the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Pleasant good evening to the unseen guests of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, to oversee a good good tree. God bless you. To the man of the house, the pastor of this house, Pastor Lambert, God bless. To the pastor of this house, God bless. You should Amen. be clapping your hands. There you go. There you go. Amen. I am very fortunate to have my elders with me. I have three of them here tonight. And I will say this very, very unapologetically. I pull from them. I pull from them. I pull from them. Amen? Amen. 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 To my mother, Bishop Dreckett, I love you. To Bishop Father Jones, God bless. And to my teacher, Teacher Lola, God bless. If you ever want to get to a fountain of knowledge, I call three names that you could go to. Amen. Hallelujah. Bishop Gans, God bless you. We are here tonight. Evangelist Cameron. Bishop Fuller. Household of God. Men and brethren, God bless you. Pastor Gray, I can't forget you. Amen. Tonight, my task is very simple. We sing and we dance and everything, and I'm just here to just talk to you for a little bit. I'm going to ask you to block these people out because this here is for you. Amen? Amen. Can we stand for the reading of God's holy word? It's coming from Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses 11 through 16. Amen? And it says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ Jesus. And we rest here the 15th verse. Amen? Amen. Amen. My talk is very simple tonight and Bishop Fuller, he bit a little piece of it. I'm going to talk to you from the topic tonight, preparing for the assignment. Amen? Amen? You may be seated in the house of God. Amen? Amen? Preparing for the assignment. I must admit that I'm a little bit nervous sitting here looking at you guys because I'm seeing myself 20-something years ago in that same place. And I don't know what's going through your mind right now. Mm. But what was going through my mind was, God, am I really ready for this? I was nervous. I was crying, I was all confused. 
because I know that from that moment on, my life would never be the same. Amen? Amen. 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 But let's talk for a little bit. Preparing for the assignment. An assignment is classified as a position, a post, or an office into which one has been entrusted to. Or it may be defined as given a specific task undertaken by someone in authority. In layman terms, an assignment is a task that has been entrusted to an individual that is capable to complete it. Amen. However, there are too many unfinished assignments in the house of God. Amen. I heard people congratulating tonight. I heard people giving you words of wisdom and encouragement. But the truth is, in the house of God, there are too many unfinished assignments. Amen. They come in hot and sweaty, they get a title, they get a position, and then they leave just as fast as they came in. And the mantle that they said that they have, they dropped it on the floor. Unfinished assignments. There are too many overnight wonders and next day blunders in the house of God. I've heard my elders say, a hurry bird will build no goodness. It's time out for doing things how you want to, if you want to, and when you want to. It's time to prepare for the assignment. The Bible says, to whom much is given, much is greatly required. I'm going to say that one more time. To whom much is given, much is greatly required. It is time that we recognize it's not about looking for personal gain. It's not about looking for material gain. It's not about making sure that you look good on a Sunday morning and that you dance good on a Friday night. But baby, it's all about preparing for the assignment. How many of us can testify that the assignment can make you but the assignment can also break you. How many of us can testify that the assignment can make you, but the assignment will also strip you? It will strip you of your pride. It will strip you of your ego. It will strip you of your patience. It will strip you of love for people when they come against you and you've been helping them when no one else was looking out for them. But talking about the assignment, the bud may have a bitter taste, but sweet shall be the flower. When you are about to embark on this assignment, you have to learn that you got to leave feelings at the door. In ministry, you got to wear something called a thick skin. You see, because they will love you today because you're preaching nice. And tomorrow when you bring a word of correction, they don't like you no more. They will talk about everything that you did prior to you coming and giving your life to God. But you still have to keep on doing the work of God. Amen. The assignment is not to glorify yourself. The assignment is not to big yourself up. The assignment is not supposed to be given so that people can look and say, Oh, wow, I wish I could sing like you and I could dance like you. But the assignment is for someone that is sitting out there getting ready to take their life. And they're saying, Lord, just send me a sign. Because if you don't send me a sign, I'm going to slit my wrist right now. Because I've had it up to here with people, with family, with friends. And then you show up at the 11.59 minute and you begin to give them a word from heaven and now who was about to take their life they put the razor down they put the blade down and they say now Lord I have a reason to live well what is the assignment the assignment is to give God praise the assignment is to glorify his name, not yours. The assignment is to spread his word. The assignment is to declare the righteousness of the God that sent you. The assignment is to live your life as an example, holy. The assignment is to preach good tidings unto the meek. The assignment is to bind up the brokenhearted. The assignment is to preach deliverance to the captives. The assignment is to bless him with the fruit of your lips. 
The Bible says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. My brothers and my sisters, got a question for you today. What are you willing to give up for the assignment? What are you willing to put off as a sacrifice for the assignment? What are you willing to let go of to begin to walk in the assignment? Are you willing to give up your pride? Some of us are prideful. Be truthful for a moment. Some of us, we have egos. If you call my name before you call his name, I'm not going to say nothing. And if you don't put the title before my name, I promise you I'm going to pretend I didn't hear when you call me. If you don't call me by every single name that I've said that I've got when I went to mourn, then purposely I'm not going to come and address you. We have egos in the house of God. We have ambitious egos in the house of God. We have an identity crisis in the house of God. Every day somebody wants to be something new and something different from the day before. But if you ask them to give you just one gracious word, they have every excuse as to why it is they can't give you that gracious word. But I just refuse to believe that the God that saved me and the God that saved you will give me a word. And you who call yourself a bishop and an apostle don't know how to give a word. There is something wrong with the equation. He qualifies those that he's called. He will give them tools to build them up. Are you willing to give up your pride? Well, well. But what do I mean by that? After you spend the entire night cleaning out, and somebody child walked through here and they just disrespected you and called you every name in the book. And when you tried, when you tried to correct that child, their parent jumped up in your face. And you have to remember that you're a minister. You have to remember that you're an evangelist. You have to remember that you're an elder. And so now the old you cannot come inside where you are right now. Praise God, somebody. Amen. Are you able to let go of your ego? But who do they think that they are talking to me like this? When you step into ministry, you have to leave your feelings at the door because people would insult you in front of your face and laugh at you behind your back. And still say, praise God with you on Sunday morning. Dance and shake your hand and pretend that nothing happened. We're talking about being on the assignment, amen? Are you willing to give up your life? Because the reality is, is that true ministry will cost you not just your pride, it will cost you not just your ego, but true ministry will cost you your life. Our brother Paul said it this way, he said, for this cause, I, Paul, became a prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. If you heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you. In other words, Paul was making it plain. He said that he was a prisoner of Jesus Christ for the Gentiles' sake. When you begin to prepare for the assignment, you have to relinquish all rights and authority over your own life. Your life no longer belongs to you. It's no longer your will, but it's thy will be done. In ministry, you have to remember it's God first and then everything else after. When you stand in ministry, people must see the God in you and not you trying to be in God. Paul said that he was a prisoner uh, for Christ Jesus. In other words, Paul said quickly, he said he is a slave. Another translation said, I am a slave for Christ Jesus. 
Are you a slave for doing the master's will on today? Are you ready to work when no one else is working? Are you ready to preach when no one wants to hear you? Are you ready to sing when they're looking at you and talking about your past? Are you ready to give up everything that you love for the honor and glory of God? Because the reality is the assignment will cost you your very life. That with the assignment, there comes a task. And the task is, can you humble yourself long enough so that the Lord can use you? Can you humble yourself long enough so that the anointing can grow on the inside of you? Can you humble yourself long enough so God can use you as a vessel wherever he leads you? That is where you should go. When you begin to work your assignment, you don't pick and choose where you go. God will send you wherever he leads me. That's where I'm going to go. Paul gave up his freedom. Paul gave up his authority and finally Paul gave up his ownership three things tonight and I'm getting ready to sit down actually are you ready to give up your freedom so if pastors say that you have Bible study Monday Wednesday and Friday are you ready to give up your freedom or is there going to be, well, you know, normally we used to have it just one day a week. How come now it's three days? And, you know, some are coming up soon. And, you know, I like to travel this and I like to go here. Are you willing to give up your freedom for the working of the ministry? See, this is not for them tonight. This is for you because you are sitting in the hot seat tonight. I didn't come to tell you how glorious it was going to be come to tell you how real it's going to get. Yes. When you're preaching everything that you got and there's someone there sitting at you trying to look the anointing out of you and you have to preach from the bottom of your soul until hell busts open for them just to say hallelujah. And even then they're not with you. They're just trying to hurry you along. Can you stand the test of time? I understand that we like the singing and dancing. I get that. I love it too. But when was the last time singing and dancing got you out of a sticky situation? I'm reminded of Paul and Silas. The Bible says that they were on their way to the prayer house. And they encountered a psychic lady. And she began to try to associate herself with them. She used these words, these men are men of the most high God, which show unto us an excellent way. I want to tell you one thing tonight. Be careful of who will try to come and associate themselves with you. Because they're going to see the fresh oil that is on you. And they're going to think that they can manipulate the anointing, the gifting that God has placed in you. The Bible says was grieved. He said within himself, the spirit that this woman is speaking by is not the same spirit that I'm working by. Paul began to question every day on my way to the temple, I meet this woman on my way to the temple, but she was never in the temple. You gotta watch out for some parking lot prophets that will prophesy to you everything, but don't come inside the house of the Lord. Try the spirit, by the spirit, and see if it lines up with the word of God. Paul and Silas, they were beaten. This is ministry. They were beaten not because they were doing something right, because the Bible says when Paul realized that the young lady was possessed, he released her from being a slave to that psychic spirit, to that python spirit. He said, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. The Bible says that the spirit came on the same day. 
But the Bible says that when her master saw that the hope of their gains were gone, in other words, when they realized that they couldn't profit on this psychic lady no more, they held Paul and Silas and they beat them and threw them in prison. Are you willing to be beaten and charged foolishly and charged erroneously and charged falsely when people just don't like you because of the anointing inside of you? The Bible says that Paul and Silas was not just thrown into the prison, but they was thrown in the inner prison. In other words, the enemy meant to lose them. Their praise wasn't supposed to be heard again. But the Bible says something strangely. In the 25th verse it says, around midnight. Just about midnight. Just before midnight, it said Paul and Silas began to sing praises unto God, and the prisoners in the temp in the in, in the jail heard them. Understand what happened here? What was meant for their destruction, God used it for His glorification. If you understand the workings of the jails in those days, the inner prison was downstairs. Out of prison was upstairs. But when you put me downstairs in the middle and I open up my mouth, my voice has no choice but to echo everywhere that it will travel. When Paul and Silas began to sing praises at 11.59, the other prisoners heard them and the Bible says immediately the foundation shake. What is going to separate you from the next preacher is your relationship with God. Don't base your relationship on the singing and dancing. Base it on a relationship with God. How is your prayer life working out these days? Are you praying just when it's absolutely necessary? Or are you praying without ceasing? Because the Bible says men ought to pray and not cease. Not lose hope. Praise God. I'm almost done. Are you willing to give up the nice clothes? Are you willing to give up the friends? Although knowing one's tradition is important, it is essential that we do not allow ourselves to stop simply at tradition. But rather we should embrace tradition and then add more onto it. For the Bible tells us, brethren, I count myself to have apprehended. But this one thing that I do, forgetting those things that are behind me and reaching forth unto the things that are before me, I press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. The church has to move from tradition and get into revelation. Tradition has brought us this far, and we yeah. praise God. Yeah. Whether you revivalist or you spiritual Baptist or you like me a little bit of whatever it is, tradition has brought you this far. But tradition is not going to get you into heaven. Tradition is not going to take you out of hell. Tradition is going to not let you have favor when your credit can't get it, but you're at the bank trying to get a loan. It's your communication with God, and he gives you favor when you didn't deserve it. He gave you favor when you didn't relieve it. He gave you favor when the us were against you. That is when you know that you have passed beyond tradition, and you're living in revelation. I guess what I'm trying to say to you tonight is this for free. God expects us to grow beyond tradition. Yes. For his name is Jehovah. Yes. And that means the God that constantly reveals himself. Yes. We must constantly be growing in Christ. In other words, we must constantly be in a state of progression. Yes. You're not ordained and licensed today. And that's it. The work has just begun. Tonight is for you. And all the hugs and all the well wishes. 
But as soon as you leave out this church, the enemy is going to be right out there ready to try you. Ready to test you. Ready to tempt you. And the same people that said that they love you on tonight, time comes Sunday morning, is the same people with stones in their hand. Ready to lick you down if you make one mistake. Just one. The Bible goes on to say, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. The assignment that you're about to undertake is going to usher you into something called the five-fold ministry. The five-fold ministry is not about superstars. It's not about titles. It's not about likes, views, and shares. See, what we got to get away from is performing for the camera. Make the church look good but have no power. Make the church sound good but have no anointing. Make the church say amen, but when you ask them, when was the last time that you was truly healed from an infirmity, they have to think and they can't even tell you when was the last time that they've been healed, delivered, and truly set free. When you enter into ministry, it's not about the likes and the clicks, it's about the glory of God. For God I live, and for God I die, and I tell it like it is. I'm not in it for the fame and for the popularity. See, it's one thing to have a mentor. It's another thing to imitate. Tell you what a mentor. This is my spiritual mother here, Bishop Drake. I don't imitate her. Amen. But she's my mentor. Yes. Because when it comes to humility, I am challenged with that. Because if you cut me and I bleed, I want to cut you back. Hello, somebody. Hello. Right here. But when God calls that we come in contact, I learn how she sits. And even when people look her over, she just sits there and smile. And in the back of my mind, I'm saying, why does my mother just sit there and smile when they overlook it? And when I know that the anointing inside of her is bigger than this entire room, but she just sits there and smiles. But I tell you what, give her five minutes in the microphone and you know exactly who Bishop Trek it is. Amen. Humility. Yes. Mentorship. What I learned from Bishop Jones, I learned how to speak eloquently, direct and to the point. I learned how to show my level of education when I am speaking. They don't have to think if I graduated, they know that I graduated with my doctorate, with my master's or what have you. You understand what I'm saying to you? When you're in ministry, you have to operate in a spirit of excellence at all times. Aren't we supposed to give God our best? Aren't we not supposed to give God what is due to him? Aren't we not supposed to give God our body as a living sacrifice? How can you give God an anyhow sacrifice? When you stand before the word of God, when you stand before the people of God, and you are charged to give a word, give the word so that they can understand it and apply it and see results. What did I learn from teacher Laura? When you want to pull a story out of a hat. And you want to put certain words together, but you don't want to offend the people. <laughs> so you ease up on them, you say, can I say this? And even though you know you're going to say it, you're asking for permission. 
before I bring that blade to you. You said yes, so now I can cut you. But what I love about her, after she cuts you, she come and she pats you up. She gives you something to walk away from. Amen, somebody? Amen. Let's bring it in now. We are here tonight. Five, the number of grace. God saw fit to have these five here tonight. And the title of my, of my speech was Preparing for the Assignment. This is the last thing I leave with you. You are only as good as the material that you study. Come on, preacher. Come on. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Come on, preacher. You have to learn how to pull from multiple sources. Yes. Study the apologetics. Yes. Study the writing of the apostles. Yes. Study the Jewish text. Yes. Get an understanding of the Tammuz. Yes. Get an understanding. Because when you open up your mouth, not all are preachers, not all are ministers, some are just teachers. But when you open up your mouth, you have to give the people something that they're going to come back to and listen again on Sunday. You are only as good as the material that you study. What am I saying? Don't copy other people's sermon and preach it. I see you laughing because you know I'm talking. It's true. If you didn't spend that time studying that word, I don't care how well you write it down, it's never going to come out the way that it came out the first time by the person that put the oil on it. Study to show yourself approved. And a workman need not to be needed ashamed. not to be ashamed when he or she is called to rightly divide the word of truth. Rightly, rightly. Stop preaching what you heard other people preaching if you haven't looked it up. My God, there's a lot of erroneous teachings right now, and people preaching their opinions. And it's just anointed opinions, but it makes no spiritual sense. I have a witness in the back there. People quoting wrong scriptures for the wrong time, as Bishop Beck was said. And then there's an amen for it. Because it's so good. You know like when they say God help those that help themselves, the Bible never said that. The Bible never said God help those that help themselves. The Bible says faith without work is dead. So I'm giving you this illustration as I close. Because I didn't want to preach to you, I just wanted to talk to you tonight. Only as good as the material that you study. Amen. The Bhagavad Gita tells us this. The mind acts like an enemy for those who cannot control it. Think about that for a moment. If you cannot control yourself, you become your own worst enemy. My Lord. In ministry, the battle is always in the mind first. If you operate in the spirit of fear, you have been shut down before you even start. My God. Praise God. So, that's my pep talk tonight. I hope I said something that blessed you. Well, well, well. I hope I said something that encouraged you. But if all else failed, remember this. To whom 
Much is given. Much is greatly required. Tonight, you are going to be given titles, well, well, offices, well. positions. None of that means a hill of beans if your attitude stinks. Come on, Come on. If you have a nasty disposition, Go ahead. I refuse to believe that you are truly anointed. Come on. Come on. If your attitude doesn't line up, I refuse to believe that you are truly anointed. If you think because of your position, next week Sunday you can tell the pastor how to do, what to do, and when to do. I refuse to believe that you're truly anointed. Remember that you are in authority, subjected to the authority that is in the house. And if you think that your vision is greater than his vision, then that brings that vision so you can take your vision and you can go outside and plant your own ministry. Ministry is much more much than the more. title. Much more. True ministry is what you do when no one else is looking. The people that you will help in the night season that you don't post about on Facebook when the morning comes. That's true ministry. When was the last time you did something for somebody and social media didn't have to give you a like or a click on it? I'll tell you a quick story and I'm closing because we have the act to do, amen? amen. I was in college. Put a bumper over. I did not know Bishop Garrison at that time. I wasn't really in church. And there was a semester when I just didn't have enough money to pay the bills. And there was a student, his name was David. We were friends. And he asked me what was going on. And I said, listen, this semester I'm gonna have to sit it out. Financial aid and cutting it. David pulled out of his pocket the money that I needed to continue my semester. I did not know this was Bishop Garrison's nephew. This is years before I came into the faith. It so happened, two semesters later, David's mother died. And David needed some money. And I had the money that David needed. Oh, no. And I gave it back to him, no questions asked. I'm not telling you my business now for the amen. This is where I'm going. A few years later, I took a photo with Bishop Garrison and I posted it on Facebook. I was happy to be in the church, happy to be around the mothers. I love being around spiritual mothers. Oh, they yeah. give you what fathers can't give you. Oh, they nurture you, they suckle you. But then when you need your discipline, you go to the father. And when I took the picture and I posted it, he hit me up on my messenger. He said, who took that photo out? I said, someone in the church. How do you know that lady? I said, sir, are you stalking me? He claimed that before, mm -hmm. not knowing that that was his aunt. Long story short, you don't know the seed that you sow today, how it's going to come back and bless you. It may not happen right away, but it will happen. That's why the Bible says, cast your bread on many waters. Because not many days after, you'll find it. That's my little talk with you tonight. Ministry, true ministry, is acting when the world is not looking. When it's you, your relationship with God, and the person that you need to help. Would you do it 
because it's in you or would you do it because people are looking. God bless you. God keep you. God make his face to shine upon you. God give you the desires of your heart. I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health as your soul prospers. That's the blessing that the Bible gives. You prosper and be in good health as your soul prospers. So your health is tied up with your soul and the prosperity that it will receive. God bless you. Yeah. Wonderful. I'm going to turn the service back over to Overseer Gertrude and she will take us in from here. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the name, Jesus. Come on, put your hands together for the man of God.